Now, before we start, I do want to thank the Chicago team at McLaren for hooking up this loan. We are behind the wheel of the McLaren GT. Yes, and what that means is this is their tamest, most lovable McLaren that they make. However, McLaren is a supercar company, so let's see how tame this thing actually is. So I think it only makes sense to talk about what's not, not in front of us, but behind us, and it is a four liter twin turbo V8. And if that sounds familiar, let's remember that this is an Aston Martin we're talking about. No. <laughs> Yes, this engine was designed and built in McLaren's headquarters in Woking uh, to be a little bit shorter, specifically to package in this car to fit a little bit more stuff, to have a little bit more room in the trunk. And we'll get to that when we talk interior, but hit me with the power figures. Yeah, so peak horsepower is 612 and peak torque is 460 pound feet, um, which if you're accustomed to seeing McLaren have a little bit more torque, it's because they actually use smaller turbos um, in this GT compared to like the, seven, the 720s and the 600 LTs. But something they really focused on with this powertrain was creating a more linear power and torque band. And it's quite apparent as you, you're in between, I would say the sweet spot of 3000 to 7000 RPMs. Yeah, and I think this is where it gets interesting to me when we talk about power figures because this being a GT car, it has a lot stronger and greater power figures than pretty much anything else in this segment. Right, yeah, and made it to this glorious V8 is their dual clutch transmission. You get McLaren's seven speed DCT here and the engine and gearbox vary in aggressiveness with uh, your three drive modes that you have. Yeah, and the nice thing about this dual clutch is not only is it programmed really well, it's incredibly snappy, it's a great gearbox, but it also has this really cool characteristic where you have two paddles and you can adjust your upshift and your downshift on the same side. The paddles are connected, so if I pull on the right paddle, I'll upshift. If I push back on the right paddle, I'll downshift. Yeah, and I think that that's an incredible feature that they worked into the car. Now, just one more thing about the drive mode. So, um, you obviously have your three drive modes and they affect your suspension and also your powertrain, or well, they, they actually call it handling here. So your handling and your powertrain um, in a manner which is implied in their names. Uh, but you, you have a dual wishbone independent suspension with adaptive dampening. So obviously in comfort mode, you're gonna get you know more rebound, more travel, and when you're in track mode, it's obviously less forgiving. Yeah, and the cool thing too about your different drive modes is that it's reflected in your gauge cluster and not just like making it red or anything. The in information that's gonna be important to you based on your drive mode, like in comfort, when you're eased back, you care about your speed, so that's big. And then when you dial it all the way up into track mode, it gives you that, that rev bar up at the top and gives you kind of like a shift indication as you approach red line. It's really cool and it reminds you that you're in something that's more supercar than GT car, like the Lexus LC that we were just in. That was a little bit heavier, softer, it's less supercar, more GT, whereas this is the other way around. And then, as we talk about the dynamics, I I'm gonna let you drive in a second, but I wanna talk about the steering in the chassis. Now, this being a mid-engine car, there's almost no weight over that front axle because obviously there's no engine there. So what that means is your initial turn in and your corner entry can be as aggressive as you as the driver can stomach. And then as you get around mid corner, you have that incredible carbon fiber monocoque chassis. It's like 3,200 pounds. The balance is phenomenal. The grip from your Pirelli P0 tires is great. The stiffer damping in that track mode keeps you planted and super confident. And then here's the thing though, with the powertrain, you do get a little bit of that turbo lag. So get on that throttle a little early than you think you need to because that'll give the turbo a second to spool and then you'll be right off yeah it's well, incredible you shoot out of a corner we were we were trying to experiment a little bit i mean if you if you stay above 3000 rpms that turbo leg is significantly reduced especially yeah. coming out of a corner so it's still there but it is reduced you're right absolutely i mean it, yeah it's i would almost argue underneath that it's almost like a second long yeah half a second long um but okay yeah how about you pull over let me drive all right one more pull Downshift, boost. So we talked about power figures, but we didn't really talk about what that means. So zero to 60 in 3.1 seconds. Now that's staggering considering that this is a GT car and it's actually quicker than some of its counterparts. 
Yeah, so when you think about something like the Bentley Continental GT, that gets to zero, that gets zero to 60 in 3.3, so 0.2 seconds slower. Talk about Aston Martins, your DB11, that's 3.4, so even slower than the Bentley still. And then the DBS Superleggera, the lightweight Aston, 3.2. So this is faster than all those. <laughs> all right, and as I kill my, uh, my gas mileage there, so if this is rated at 15 in the city, 21 on the highway for a combined 17. And depending how you drive it, you can get up to 400 miles with a full tank of gas, um, which again is actually better MPG than some of its um, competitors as well in this GT segment. Do um, you want to hear something that's completely irrelevant? Yes, let's hear it. <laughs> My 4Runner gets the exact same stuff. Combine like 17 MPG and like 400 miles on a tank. Matt literally can't <laughs> go a video without mentioning, My ride. His, without mentioning his 4Runner for some reason. And I mentioned it before, but I just want to touch on it just a little bit more. And they really did try to provide this linear sense of torque that you get. So you actually experience about 95% of the this engine's 465 pound-feet of torque between 3,000 and 7,250 RPMs. And the sensation that you get in between those revs is incredible. Yeah, I think that's the important thing to note too, is like under that 3,000, 3,250, 3,500 RPM, it is like kind of nerfed. Like you really want to be up in that power band and then there from like 3,250 all the way up to redline, past 8,000, it it's just great. pulls yeah. and pulls and pulls. And I, it's just spool and noise, it's so cool. Yeah, I was, I was surprised how far into the actual rev band it like maintained that power. I was yeah. impressed. Pulls all day long. But yeah, that, that bottom that bottom end of the of the rev band, there's just not a lot of power there. But again, that's kind of what you want when you're driving around in the city. So yeah, I guess talking about city and day-to-day -day driving, so this is a GT car, so I guess how does it stack up in that regard? So there's a few things that I think of when it comes to what you kind of want in a GT car, right? So the one, you want it to be comfortable, the convenience, like what features does it have, space, ride quality. So we'll get into some of those when we talk about the interior. Yeah. But in comfort mode, it is very comfortable. I mean, you do get a little feel from the bumps in the road in mm -hmm. your steering wheel, but I think ultimately you would want that in this car. Yeah, and I think the thing that I, I've experienced with, with our time in the car so far is that the damping is more comfortable than a Focus RS. Mm -hmm. And even in sport mode, like the more aggressive damping setting, it's still more comfortable than like something the Supra that we tested a couple weeks ago. Yeah, it's so a great, comfortable car. I would say we were a little bit surprised that um, there is a bit of cabin noise in here, and I think that just has to do with the, the chassis. And I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I have some thoughts on, and it's it's solely due, I think, to the fact that this still subscribes to the supercar ethos. So you've got a carbon fiber monocoque. It's concerned about being lightweight. Yep. It still is a supercar company providing a GT car. So there's not a lot of like sound deadening, insulation, the glass is thinner. I mean, you get in these luxury cars, you get spoiled with this acoustic glass and like, you know, well, all that stuff. They actually do have some of that built in here, but I, yeah. I would agree that we do hear some of that noise. Right. And then the last thing I did want to mention just about day-to-day -day stuff is the visibility in here is excellent in your front it's, it's great in the back it's great your side mirrors work work well um, you don't have a, you don't really have a blind spot on this car and that's a good thing because you unfortunately cannot actually even get blind spot monitoring as an option so yeah. it's good that it doesn't have one <laughs> my favorite thing about the visibility like you're right the front rear visibility is amazing because you have almost no hood but my favorite thing and the funniest thing is depending on how you have your side mirrors adjusted like it's just all intake yeah. it's just so big but you're, it looks so cool you're reminded, in your side view you're reminded how big these yeah like are. you don't get that in an audi r8 yeah. the intakes are a lot smaller this is just like big wide rear hips it's just so cool and last thing i do just want to quickly mention about the day-to-day -day stuff is the braking so standard this comes with steel brakes and mclaren said that they wanted to do that because it, it obviously works better day-to-day -day, right it's not as harsh as a ceramic and you, it's not really the right application but you do have an option to get the ceramic brakes and that's what we have spec to this press car that we have um, and they work phenomenally well yeah and i think the ethos and the thinking behind that is like this is the gt car so the intention is not to take it to the track and the the carbon ceramics when you take them to the track that's really the the intended application they're great at dissipating heat you can go lap after lap after lap without getting as much brake fade um, and they just work better in that application but since this is the gt car it works perfectly fine with the steels yeah and you do have cruise control which is great but it is Basic not feature. adaptive unfortunately <laughs> I and know. i think 
that would be something that I would want in a GT car. Uh, but unfortunately, you don't have it here. Ah, oh, shoot. We're going to be late for our culturally appropriate reservation I made us. Oh, okay. Afternoon tea, admiring this beautiful British McLaren GT. What more could you want? To the English. Cheers. <laughs> we, have, we have Earl Grey here. Um, and biscuits. Can we talk about my, one of my favorite things about this car? Is the color. It's the color. Serpentine. It, oh my God, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Probably, it is good. if not the best, one of the top three, top five, top three best colors that I've ever seen on a car. The dimension is insane. Yeah, it's really unique. It's fantastic. Um, I think overall styling, you know, it's quite a long car, but it looks fantastic. Yeah, and you know uh, what it kind of looks like. Don't even say it. So I, get, I will admit, from the front, it it looks like Corvette. It looks was very inspired. Sweet. Was this for sure? I mean, the CA definitely took some notes out mm -hmm. of McLaren's hand. I don't know how McLaren feels about that, but I would be irritated. Yeah, I'd be very irritated. But you know what? Besides that, you can tell that this is in another class. It's a totally time. another league. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And like. Here's the thing, I want to talk about the headlights too, because I think it's important. Now, when McLaren came back with their MP4-12C, love the styling. It was kind of whatever, but now their headlights are like really kind of aggressive. The headlight here like, like mimics ones. their logo. Yeah. It's like, it, it fits perfectly. And it's cool because the headlight actually kind of goes into the, the front bumper a little bit, that mm -hmm. line. I, I really like that as well. Yeah, you kind of get that in the speed tail as mm -hmm. well. Very cool. The nose, the, the ground clearance does look a little bit high but you do have that nose lift, so that's part of it. Yeah, so you actually have as much ground clearance, I think, as like a C-Class, which is actually pretty impressive. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. Yeah. Around the side? Yeah, um, so you have 20-inch rims in the front and then 21s in the back. The, abs the profile of the car is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it's, it's the classic mid-engine shape, short nose, uh, detracting kind of sloping roof line. The roof does stay high pretty long because this is the GT and you have a fairly long trunk. Um, but the thing that's just incredible is the massive air intakes on um, like right before that rear hip Just huge just gulping in air you put your hand there and it feels like it's gonna get sucked in Yeah, and it's I amazing. mean that was an effort that they went to extreme lengths to try and do was keep that that engine area cool and also the storage space above it so i mean mm -hmm. it makes sense mm -hmm. and a high power engine like this right you need it yeah there's so much venting and cooling back there yeah and then around the back you don't have active aero like you would in a 720 or anything, but like you have this molded in duck bill. This, I mean, it's just nice. It's subtle, but it's so elegant. Yeah, you have in the, the tail lights are like a line. Um, you have a dual exhaust there. You also have this rear diffuser. Um, it's a good looking back. It's just a stunning yeah, car. It is a gorgeous car. And I mean, and, and we're not the only people that think that. We've been driving this around all day and it's how many people have, I, on the way over here, somebody pulled their car over, <laughs> yes. stopped, so you could get in front of them and then so they could photos. film the yeah. car. I think it's a combination of the color and just McLarens are quite the rare, color. right? But mm -hmm. um, it, it is gorgeous. I do have to ask you though, what is your favorite look of the car? Is it the front, three quarter panel, rear? Uh, that's a Sophie's choice because um, it, it just looks so good from every angle. I think yeah. probably the front three quarter, like we have it here with the wheel turned in. I would agree. It just, it gets, oh, it just looks so good. But then that back angle is so wide and muscular looking. What about you? I, I, w I, I agree with you completely. The front, the front three quarter? The front three quarter. I could yeah. literally look at this thing all day. Let's <laughs> get in, inside the car talk interior because it is scorching out here. I don't know if you can yes. see beads of sweat running down we Matt's beaten up. forehead. But uh, we decided we, we only have the car for the day and it's 90 some degrees yeah, with like 80% humidity and I'm in a very dark red suit. All I hope is that you guys got a chuckle out this skip because we went to great lengths. Yeah. Let's okay. do interior. interior. <sighs> Did you have any trouble stepping over the carbon fiber monocoque? Um, I mean, a little bit. It's it's definitely... It's in, not as bad as I thought. No, it's not that bad. How cool is it that the doors go up, though? Yeah, the doors are a um, great feature. Really, really cool. Um, yeah, I mean, here we are. It's a McLaren in here. Design? What do you think? Yeah, so, I mean, they purposefully made it a little bit longer to try and give you some more space um, and feel in here. So, I think, like, they did a good job. Like. We're both over six feet tall mm -hmm. and we don't have any... Headroom is not yeah, a problem. Headroom is not a problem at all. And I would say um, like your knee room is not a problem. The, where your feet go. Yeah, the pedal box. The pedal box is uh -huh. um, 
pretty small. narrow. Yeah. It's small. Yeah. yeah, on both sides. Yeah, and that yeah, that's the thing too. But you know, you think about where you're sitting in the cabin versus where you are in relation to the car. Yeah, we're like if you right had we're on the yeah, public. if you had any more foot space, it would go into the frunk. Mm -hmm. So they've maximized that space. Yeah, your feet are a little cramped, but like you'll get over it. But I would say it's very comfortable. We oh, have yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, you got electric, the most, in, yeah, the electric. most infuriating controls <laughs> yes, in try, the world to try and control the your seat positioning. Yeah, so um, it's on the inside of the seat next to the center console. Yeah, you can And it's see buttons. What it does. It's not like the normal stuff where you like angle. Like there's a seat where you like angle and you push it forward how you want the seat to go. It's buttons, so you have to like guess. Yeah, it yeah, it's not my favorite thing. <laughs> um, but you do have some nice snap of leather in here. The materials Very good. are really good. Yeah. Um, it's Stitching is good. Yeah, it's definitely like GT sports car in here, especially with these uh, air vents. Yeah, that you have. yeah, very cool. Um, the the aluminum that you get over the Bowers and Wilkins speakers is very cool. Like you could shred cheese on this yeah. if you wanted to. I just like the way it looks too, and then you see the mm -hmm. yellow accent of the speaker. It is so cool. Yeah, that's Bauer very very it, cool. And it sounds excellent, by the way. It does. Yeah, it's very nice. Um, yeah, build quality. I mean, like it's solid. It's very solid. Um, Oh, that's a little bit of shake. Yeah. You do have about three cup holders. I would say one of them is one usable. Of them is usable. Uh, the other one's like down here in this cave. Yeah, it's almost impossible to, to try and grab that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Put all this down yeah, here. The, the, the control center, I think, is like good to use. The gear selector, I think, is... Like, this is all configured really nicely, I personally. It think. makes sense, but it's finished in our least favorite material. Yeah, the piano black. I don't love that. Yeah. You know where else the piano black? Yeah, so... The, one of the coolest features of this car, I think, is the, um, I guess, the sunroof that you have. Electrochromic. Electrochromic. And it yes. gives you the ability to control how much light is coming into it, it which is. is just awesome. It's neato burrito. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> ah, but cool. now I'm looking up here where you're controlling this, and what do I see? This rear view mirror. Yeah. Which this, is the same rear view mirror that was in my 2008 Passat. I promise you it looks like something out of a 98 Honda Accord. Everything is so future, everything is so McLaren, and then you get this. I feel like they could have just done one that has no bezel. Like that it looks made, yeah, it been like, sexy to me. This like is it a big deal? Sexy. No. Did I notice it? Yeah. But also like there's no, this material, There's it's nowhere else in the car. Like why? Yeah. It's not but my anyway, favorite. But um, anyway. Visors are okay. You have a little mirror here, so yeah, GT -ish. which is so interesting. Yeah, the mirror needs to be separate. I would think that would add weight. Um, let's talk about the infotainment system. So yes. it's kind of set up like an iPhone. So you kind of have this home button here. It, it's actually quite quick when you click on it. Mm -hmm. Go into the navigation. You move the cursor around. It's a touch screen, and it yeah. it works really well. I would say processor's quick. The biggest downfall of this infotainment system is that they do not have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, and I believe yeah. the reasoning behind it is because of how the screen is um, it's oriented. oriented. Yeah, yeah, so it's it's vertical as opposed to most cars are horizontal. So maybe it's just not set up there yet. Isn't that or, so funny that it's shaped like an iPhone? And you can't get Apple CarPlay. Yeah, it's. it's <laughs> And I could see how that could be frustrating, especially when you're um, on a journey and you want to use like yeah. Waze or yeah, Google yeah, yeah. Maps or something as opposed to this navigation. But this navigation system is It's fine. Quick. It's quick. Yeah. It works. Yeah, it's fine. My favorite thing about this uh, infotainment system, I'm going to click the fan button. When we get to like adjusting uh, your fan speed and stuff. Your climate control. Yes. The, the guy on has here a has a racing helmet yeah, on that and is, that's just the coolest thing. It is. I love cool. it. It's no, so it. fun. Um, we also have ambient lighting in in this trim and mm -hmm. I know you wanted to mention something Oh, I have noticed. fun facts. Yes. I have fun facts. So when you go into the ambient lighting system, uh, you have like the original McLaren colors, like mm -hmm. the red and the white, like the Bruce McLaren days. And then on the farther side, you have today's McLaren colors for F1, the orange and the blue. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's really cool. I like that McLaren kind of brings that heritage in. That's why we did that script at the beginning of the uh, video. But like, it's really cool that they kind of go back to that. Ferrari does that too. Yeah, and I think between the seats, you actually have a pretty adequate center console for storing sunglasses <laughs> and other items. It's not the largest It's bigger thing. than the Miata, though. Yeah, it is bigger than the Miata. Um, the some, coolest thing, though, yeah, is right here. The storage that you have in the door is also really cool. It, you can put your wallet in there yeah. or a pair of sunglasses. It's so it's incognito. Kind of, yeah, it's kind of hidden, which Very is, is cool. really cool. Yeah. Um, I do want to touch on this because it does, unfortunately, lack a few safety features that other GT competitors have. So. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it doesn't have adaptive cruise control. Yep. It doesn't have adaptive emergency braking or nope. lane departure warning or blind spot monitoring. But I feel like, <laughs> this, like car, a lot. <laughs> this car hardly has any blind spots. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, those aren't even options that you can get. 
yeah. in the 2021. Buy a McLaren, drive the McLaren. Yes, I agree with you. But I'm it, not, it would I'm be not nice, complaining about it. Would it would be nice to have blind spot, I'll say. Yes, yeah. or adaptive cruise control. Yes. Here's, another th here's a couple things that I was... Uh, when I hear the word GT car, and we just talked about how this is on the supercar end of the GT spectrum, but when I hear GT car, I think of like Mercedes Aston Martin. So I think of cooled seats, I think of massage seats, I think of fragrance diffuser. Mm -hmm. None of that's in here. No, I don't believe that you do get any of that, unfortunately. And this car is over 200 grand? Yes. I guess the only thing that I would really love is to see, seats. I don't really need the massage. The cooled seat would be really nice yeah. though, especially on a day like today where it's 90 degrees and we're in suits. Um, you know what, one feature that I do want to mention is the stocks for like the indicator and mm -hmm. the windshield wipers. They're just like these little skinny, Yeah. they almost look like ice cream sticks. Yeah, they're like, it's an interesting design. I don't know if that's meant to save weight. Like yeah, they maybe. look kind of cool and futury, but yeah. I also like how there's no buttons on the steering wheel. Like there's nothing to distract you on the steering wheel from anything other than driving. Yes, I agree, but I was curious, like, if I wanted to see something else on my digital dash, if I could, and, like, I... You can't, I yeah, you can't adjust can. it from yeah, your steering wheel. Yeah, no. Flat bottom. It's, um, it's nice. It's okay. So I do want to mention about... I do want to mention storage for a second. Yes. So uh, space in the back, there's enough for a golf club, a set of golf clubs, which yep. is awesome. Yep. Um, there's just over 20 cubic feet in total. So you have about um, just over five in the front and just under 15 cubic feet in the back. It's the world's most practical supercar. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> objectively, I feel like it's impressive. It makes so much sense. But you can't necessarily use all of that because of the contour and the shapes of the yeah. space. Yeah. It's kind of like the Porsche Cayman. Like, yeah, it's got a hatchback, but like there's a mid-engine, yeah. you know? So like you have a good amount, 20 cubic feet, but it has to be very specifically shaped 20 mm -hmm. cubic feet. Yeah. And you know that you actually can't access the engine at all here as a, as a, a, a buyer of this car. I don't know anybody that would buy this car that would do their own engine work. Well, I mean, even if you just wanted to look at it, you can't. But no. I do want to mention that, you know, there's concerns that obviously back there, if you have stuff, it's going to get really hot in the sunlight. Yeah, but they went putting to, it over the engine too. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> but they went to great efforts to try and keep that area as cool as possible. So the rear glass is IV, um, UV treated yeah. to keep the solar rays out. And they also have the, the metal heat shield above the engine, and then they also have insulated material built in as well. Um, and then there's also external airflow that passes through the trunk area to try and keep things cool back there. Yeah. My I still favorite think it thing, gets hot though. But. Oh, it does, yeah. But my favorite thing about the trunks, the trunk area is the C-pillar. I don't even know if you'd call it a C-pillar, but the forged carbon mm -hmm. that you can see back there is phenomenal. Yeah, I was a little bit bummed that like you don't have the engine appearance package. You can't like see the engine, but the forged carbon looks so good. Yeah, and agree. you're just constantly reminded that it is a carbon fiber monocoque. It is lightweight. It is a supercar at the end of the day. Final thoughts. So there you have it. That's the McLaren GT. And as we've stated through the entire video, it's on the supercar end of the GT spectrum. And while it may lack some common features, it makes up for that by providing uncommon experiences. Whatever you want to call it, at the end of the day, the McLaren GT is a phenomenal car. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.